For today's quiz, we're going to be talking about a bathroom scale. If you stand on a bathroom scale, most people say, I like to get my weight. So they stand on the scale, they look down on it. In this particular quiz, what we'd like is if you were standing on your bathroom scale and then you jumped up in the air and then landed back on it, and you could graph that in real time, what would that graph look like for the amount of force and time? So this is what your quiz looks like for today. And as always, we want you to make your graph and then rate your confidence about your thinking. How confident are you about your curve that you made? All right, let's go over typical student um, ideas. So uh, most students recognize that I'm gonna have some weight when I stand on a scale. So they'll start here like so. Now when they jump up, they say uh, my force would certainly go up and then I'm gonna end up not being on the scale at some point. So they feel that they would, it would come down to a zero point and there would be nothing there. And then when I landed on the scale, clearly that scale is gonna to have to endure a very large force and it would come back to whatever my weight was. These are supposed to be the same before and after. So that's a typical student response. To help us understand the quiz for today, I have a scale that is connected to the vernier system. When I step on the scale, this red line, which is supposed to be at zero, but it's not zeroing, but consider that at the zero point. When I stand on here, let me collect, you'll see that it uh, will measure my weight as we go along there. So that's what's happening. Let's find out what the graph actually is when I jump. So hit collect, I'll stand on here, and then I'll jump. And you can see something different than what the students uh, have predicted happens. And that's what we're going to talk about. It's this feature right here, the going down and not the going up, that we need to talk about. So as we saw, we actually get a dip before we end up having a larger force. So it comes along like this, and then it dips down and then goes up when I'm off the scale, and then follows along. What's with the dip? Here's what, uh, here's what uh, is happening. First of all, if I'm just standing here, I'm a mass, I'm standing on a scale, I'm not accelerating up or down. I have two things acting on me right now. First of all, I have weight, that's going down, and I must have the scale pushing back up on me. So if I were to draw that, I could say, I look like this. I have some kind of mass, I have some kind of weight, which is equal to my mass and gravity pulling down on, on me, and then I also have an equal and opposite force back upwards. That's what the scale is providing. We can call that the force of the scale or the force normal. But think about this. In order for me to jump up, I have to lower down before I start to accelerate up. The only way for this object to go down, I can't change my weight, I need to simply, that same box again, same mass, my weight is exactly the same as it was before, so I need to make that force smaller. So I bend my knee so I'm not putting all the pressure onto the scale. And this is why we end up getting this uh, decrease in force on the scale. So when I'm going down before I jump up, the scale would read less. Now, of course, if I'm down here now, and I have the same exact amount of weight, trying to make the arrows the same size. Now, in order to jump up, I'm gonna have to give a much greater force here a nice big force, and that's what we're seeing there. 
I think the rest is self-explanatory. So, that's your quiz for today.